All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Addicted to Art, a series from Well FM, where we interview individual creatives who are also collectors, learning about their journey into art addiction. And I am your host, Decrypt DeLorean. Uh, today, we actually are going to do something a little bit different. Uh, I have a very, very special guest today. His name is Aiden Mustafa. He's an astro photographer and also one of our uh, exhibiting artists. So, this is this is very exciting. This is the first uh, the first exhibiting artist that we get to have on the show, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a little bit different stuff today. I'm very very excited to have you here with us, uh, Mustafa. Again, <laughs> you you're you're becoming a regular, and I love that. Uh, yes, hello. How are you? Hi, hi. I'm fine. How are you, DC? I, I'm doing pretty good today. Um, it's a little bit of a, well, I guess it's a little bit of a sunny day, but I haven't been outside to actually see it. So, um, oh. uh, you know, vines are shut, uh, room is shut, uh, and, uh, you know, maybe maybe later. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, you, you, you're still early. So, yeah. But nowadays here in Ankara, in Turkey, it's like cloudy and uh, rainy, but it's not that cold yet. Oh yeah, that's a good. So let's start. Let's start uh, the show. Ask. I want to know what the weather's like right now in uh, in your neck of the woods. Oh well, it is. Um, it's not cold, uh, but it is um, cloudy and rainy a little uh, from you know from time to time. Uh, so we don't have uh, clear skies, and I don't think we will have clear skies uh, for a while. Wow. Yeah, but and good news that I will, uh, you know, uh, while we are talking about, um, you know, my uh, piece in uh, the, the remote telescope. Uh, so uh, even though if I don't have clear skies, uh, there are clear skies somewhere on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is so awesome. Because um, and this is going to be something and uh, folks are in for a special, special treat today. You're going to learn a lot about science. Um, and uh, I've seen the slides. They're they're awesome. Um, I'm really excited to, to, to dig deep into this mm -hmm. subject because every time you come on, I learn something new. Um, but yeah, so in your neck of the woods, it's it's cloudy. It's not t quite cold yet over here. Um, it's uh, it's getting cold. I gotta say, it's getting kind of cold. It's not quite you know winter cold, but we're getting there. Uh, you know the leaves are changing. Everything's changing over here, um, and we're about to we're about to hit winter. Um, probably usually around October thirty first is when we get real cold. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, but it's still it's still kind of nice, but kind of not. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, um, so let before we get into um, you know, just some just some technical stuff about uh about your newest drop, which we're really excited to talk about. Um, you know, what's what's been going on in your life otherwise in the web three world? I mean, you, you always you're always into Hello. something, you're doing stuff. Uh tell us tell us a little bit about what you got going on right now and then we're going to talk about your drop and see this amazing amazing okay. display you got uh well um uh, you know nowadays you know in normal life in daily life not much is going on actually but you know i've been um you know uh writing and preparing uh, stuff um for uh, we're going to talk about it actually um uh, with this telescope live that i'm um uh, their tutor and their uh, judge for their competitions and stuff. So I I was I've been preparing some video and some uh, you know text for them uh, for their new website, and we are also getting ready to prepare some more tutorials for them. Uh, me and my uh, friends. Uh, yeah, and uh, today I I received a phone call from one university in Istanbul. Uh, they are going to have an astrophotography uh, exhibition and also some days that uh, they will invite astrophotographers uh, to talk. So they were also inviting me. So it's kind of exciting. That is very exciting. Yeah, that's um, I, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what you do, because really anything that you get into, <laughs> um, it, it's always exciting to see 
you know, what, what happens and, and what you have going on. And uh, even when you go out and you take your shoots and um, I, I love watching that stuff. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see where, what you do next, really. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, uh, I actually wrote it in, in the chat. I don't know if you saw it, but um, there is a new comment, uh, you know, um, and it is thought to be, uh, it's gonna be bright enough to see with binoculars uh, during the first uh, months of uh, 2023. So I got excited because I love comets and I, uh, you know, I love shooting them. They are a little bit trickier than uh, normal uh, deep space astrophotography. So I really hope that, you know, it's gonna get really bright, maybe even for naked eye level. So yeah, fingers crossed. Oh, I'm excited to to see that because, um, yeah. It, well, okay. I'm going to tell you a funny story, and then we'll get to um, <laughs> we'll get to your slides. Uh, but I, I was driving. I was picking up uh, somebody, and I was driving, and I thought I saw a shooting star. And oh. the first thing I thought about was you because I said, "Man, I I, ho I, I wonder if." Uh, <laughs> Mustafa is <laughs> watching. Out there watching this, uh, or or maybe he's sending me a sign from somewhere. I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was me. Uh, that that was me with the Millennium Falcon, actually. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah, and fo and folks, if you if you don't know um, Mustafa's work, so you're gonna know it because he's gonna show you in just a second. But uh, he's an astrophotographer, and you know, has some of the most amazing shots. Uh, from uh, from outer space, um, you know, and, and this stuff, uh, very, he's very excited about it. He's very good at it. And uh, and we, we have the pleasure of having him on for several series. So he, he came and did a talk about it, which is awesome. Uh, we did, um, what was the last, we did a we did a camera culture just recently. Um, yeah, and it, like and, a geez, month ago or something. Yeah, about a month ago, and um, and this is our like our, our special edition uh, for our exhibiting artists. Um, so yeah, if you don't know, you can go back and watch those episodes with Mustafa. Some amazing information there, just absolutely amazing, going over um, the whole process, uh, most of it, and then um, and then the other show was basically you know, hey, this is this is uh, his work uh, in in a nutshell uh, of what he's been doing throughout the years. Um, but today we are going to talk about uh, the equestrian, uh, the celestial equestrian, which is uh, really, really cool. So um, I'm going to I'm going to bring up the slide for everybody to look at uh, and get ready, because this is some intense information uh, that uh, that is always exciting to learn about when uh, when you're talking about astrophotography. If you don't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> you are not going to know about all the work that goes into uh, this type of photography. So you need to watch this because this is uh, is stellar. And I do. And that's a great word for this, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I cannot think of uh, any better. <laughs> all right. I, I'm going to I'm going to give the room to you. Um, yeah. Go ahead and uh, and tell us all about this. Yeah. OK. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, as you know, and maybe some people. Uh, folks that are watching also may know. Uh, I got uh, accepted to Spurrier recently. Uh, I was invited uh, by a gallery called Artifact Dot, and I also say hi to them from here for their kindness. Um, so uh, I, I minted one piece in um, uh, Alpha Trilogy, uh, we, whom I really respect, uh, collected that piece, and it was a very special one also. Uh, but this also is a very, very special one. And we will talk about this one, you know, what we are seeing in this image, uh, what is going on, how it is going on. Uh, but before that, uh, I recently saw um, um, some kind of poll uh, on Twitter. Uh, it was asking um, if uh, astrophotography was a fine art. And I actually wrote a uh, quite long answer to that. Um, I think he was a collector. Uh, and my answer is, you know, of course, uh, astrophotography is a fine art, uh, but also it is a combination of engineering, science, and art. So I will explain one by one 
why it is engineering. Uh, because you know you have to select the right equipment, make them work together in in uh, harmony, and make them to uh, work together all the time and every time you set it set it up, and also um, you know constant problem solving even uh, while you are purchasing your equipment, uh, while you are shooting while you're pre and post processing. And we will get to those uh, terms, uh, pre and post processing. And uh, it is also science because you need to know uh, at least the basics uh, of astronomy and astrophysics, uh, of course, computer sciences, of course, uh, softwares, uh, and of course, uh, uh, you know, you have to know your equipment, details of your equipment. You know, astrophotographers know uh, a lot more than other types of photographers about their camera, their sensor, the uh, types of noise and everything. And this is the science part. And the last, of course, it's an art because um, you're bringing something visually and you are, uh, you are bringing it to people for their liking. But before that, uh, you have to uh, worry about uh, your usage of field of view. You have to worry about uh, how you're going to put the uh, you know, objects in the image. So it's framing. Uh, you have to worry about colors and the reality of the colors. Uh, you have to worry about orientation. Uh, of the image and stuff like that. Just imagine, you know, if you reverse um, this image uh, 180 degrees, then uh, most likely you won't be seeing this horse head, right? Uh, so it is all, uh, this This is the art part, I would say. Of course, uh, the colors and everything. Uh, so it is combination of all these three. Maybe you could even go further and add more, um, disciplines to it, uh, but in my opinion, it is a combination of uh, engineering, science, and art. Uh, having said that, uh, let's go and dive, dive into a bit of science, uh, a little bit astronomy and astrophysics. Um, so uh, here, um, you know, in in universe, there are lots of different types of things, you know, there are galaxies, there are nebulae, uh, there are star clusters, open star clusters, uh, globular star clusters, and so on. You know, there are lots of different types of uh, galaxies, barred galaxies, double barred galaxies, el elliptical galaxies and stuff. Uh, but here, as this uh, picture is um, um, a nebula, and actually it's a combination of three different types of nebulae, uh, we are going to talk about uh, nebulae. So we have here emission nebula, uh, reflection nebula, dark nebula, which we will talk in details because this image has three of them in one image. We also have planetary nebula. We also have supernova remnant nebula. And we also have integrated flux nebula. Before getting into emission reflection and dark nebula, uh, let's talk about uh, these three a little. Um, planetary and supernova remnant nebula are actually, uh, you know, different types of um, that of stars. If a star is um, a massive, as massive as our sun, uh, when uh, it consumes all the hydrogen uh, which it is filled, uh, it will die. And when it's die when it dies, uh, it's going to be a planetary nebula. So there will be a um, residual star, a very small white star in the uh, center, and the rest uh, will be uh, some residual uh, material from uh, the um, solar system. So those are those type of uh, nebula are called uh, planetary nebula. Uh, you know, when a star 
as big as our sun dies, it, they become um, planetary nebula. And supernova remnant, uh, supernova is actually a little bit more dramatic uh, end of a dying of a um, star. A larger and more massive stars uh, explode something called a supernova. And it is a massive, massive explosion. Uh, it, you know, uh, ruins the star. And it, um, you know, the residual material from the star is uh, all over the space. You know, they can be so big, um, you know, because they explode um, extremely. So the, the, those type of uh, nebula are called uh, supernova uh, remnants. And uh, the last one is integrated flux nebula. This is a um, strange um, concept, actually. Uh, so th these all these nebula types are, you know, because of a star or one or a couple of stars. But integrated flux nebula is, uh, says that, uh, you know, there are lots of interstellar dust and gas all over in our galaxy. And this interstellar dust and gas uh, is reflecting all the uh, light from all the stars within our galaxy and brings integrated flux nebula. That is why this integrated flux nebula uh, is extremely, extremely um, dim. Uh, it's, it's so faint uh, to bring out uh, I actually forgot to put um, it in this uh, slide because I took the, a, a photo of this integrated flux nebula and I actually combined data with a friend from United States and uh, it was total 50 hours of data. Uh, so I think maybe we can uh, go and have a look at it um, afterwards. Uh, so let's, let's talk about emission nebula. Um, an emission nebula is, is created by ionized gases, actually, and uh, usually uh, by high energy ultraviolet light emitted from a nearby hot star or stars. And when they hit uh, the atom uh, in the neighbor, neighboring uh, regions, um, they cause um, you know, they emit light, and that is called emission nebula. So let's have a look um, at it. So there is a little bit science here. Uh, last night we were chatting on um, uh, Wales group, and you know, people were afraid, uh, kind of scared, but there is nothing to be scared. So it's really uh, easy. Uh, so we are looking at a hydrogen atom. So you know, hydrogen atom is the most abundant atom uh, in the universe even in our uh, own atmosphere, right? Uh, because it is the most basic element uh, with one proton, one, elect uh, one neutron in the nucleus. Uh, this letter N is actually here, uh, nucleus. And uh, there is one proton and one neutron inside. And there is one electron. So this is actually, you know, what you're seeing here is Bohr model of atom. Uh, we always think that you know electrons are um, rotating around nucleus and stuff, uh, like um, planets revolving around sun. But it's not like that actually. There are energy levels around the nucleus, and you can see here uh, n one, n two, n three are the different energy levels, and. Um, these electrons or this electron can be in one of the uh, energy level. So uh, what we said, um, you know, if there is a nearby star and if the, these stars are, um, if this star or these stars are energetic young stars, they will be emitting lots of uh, ultraviolet lights. And photons from uh, this UV light, it is a light actually, so they are also photons, right? So they come and hit this hydrogen atom. Actually, they hit to this electron. Uh, so, you know, 
you uh, you add some energy to the system. So when you uh, when these UV photons hit this atom, this electron will go from first energy level to third energy level, and then it will come back to second energy level because it will lose some of its energy uh, emitting a photon. So let's watch it again. Oops. Oops. Wrong direction. Oh. UV photons comes, hits the atom, and this electron is excited by this uh, UV photon's energy, and it goes to upper energy level, and comes back to lower energy level because everything on universe uh, wants to be wants to have less energy. Everything wants to have less energy. Uh, for instance, if you drop something, it will go and fall uh, because it will have a potential energy and it will want to have less energy uh, by dropping. So that's the rule of uh, universe, right? Uh, for this hydrogen atom, um, specifically, this uh, photon emitted is uh, has a wavelength of 660, 56 nanometers. And that is why we call this hydrogen alpha or H2 regions, because uh, as you will know, as you will remember, it was at energy level one uh, in the first place, then now it's at the second level. So this hydrogen atom is again hydrogen atom, but it is a little different hydrogen atom than before. And, uh, you know, this, I typed these letters in red on purpose and this uh, arrow on purpose because this 656 nanometer uh, light is red light. And we will see uh, in the image uh, now. Uh, so if this happens, uh, for lots of hydrogen atoms around, this is what happens. See, there is lots of red region here. So this is called uh, IC434 nebula, and also it's an emission nebula. Uh, so what is why it is IC434? You will see uh, in the coming slides uh, different letters and different uh, numbers. These are actually uh, some catalogs uh, that are created to catalog uh, deep space objects. And there are lots of catalogs like this. One of the most famous one is Messier uh, catalog, uh, which was um, created by Charles Messier, a French astronomer in uh, 18th century. There is NGC catalog, there's IC catalog, there's LDN catalog, there's LBN catalog, uh, the Barnard catalog and so on. Um, so when you see uh, this type of thing in front of a nebula, uh, then you will know it's a uh, catalog, uh, name and number. Uh, so here we have um, IC434. Uh, so this region you're looking at is lots of hydrogen atom, atoms are excited by a nearby star uh, UV photons. And this IC434 uh, is a bright emission nebula uh, in the constellation of Orion. And uh, we will have a look at it uh, actually now after this slide, uh, because I want to show where these three nebula in this image located in a night sky. And you can actually go out and see, uh, you, of course you cannot see this uh, nebula, but you can you will see the star uh, nearby uh, this three nebula uh, in the constellation of Orion, and um, like I said, you know there are lots of uh, young and uh, energetic stars around ionizing the hydrogen atoms uh, around here, and it's a 
part of very big molecular clouds. Uh, so yeah, let's go and see. So this is um, in one of our uh, classes actually with Wales, uh, we actually went through uh, this uh, program. It's called Stellarium and it is uh, totally free for uh, PCs, uh, for um, Windows uh, operating system, for Mac, and for also uh, other types of uh, operating systems. So this is actually a um, very nice um, um, way of seeing uh, what we have in the night sky at the moment. So uh, you can go and uh, choose, oops. Oh, um. Uh, because I'm sharing uh, two uh, screens, uh, it doesn't let me have the um, menu here. But I will, I will just uh, go a little further in time that you can do. So you're you're going into the future right now. Uh, yes, how, I am. how this and, is going to line up? <laughs> yeah, and actually, you can see that you know uh, it is by default. Earth, Ankara, so it, it is the elevation is 874 meter. So it's showing here uh, on uh, left bottom. So, uh, you know, just imagine you're in Ankara, uh, you're seeing the sky like this. So uh, because Orion uh, constellation uh, goes up uh, a little later uh, at night, uh, I will I will go to 1 a.m. So here it is. This is Orion Nebula, uh, sorry, Orion constellation. And it is really prominent, even uh, within the, um, you know, big cities with lots of light pollution. You can make sure that you will see these three stars because they are so bright. and. This actually, uh, this is the Great Orion Nebula. This is not our topic now, but this is Great Orion Nebula. This is the only nebula that you can see naked eye in the uh, Northern Hemisphere. So you can even see with this naked eye. But you will definitely see these three uh, stars, even with bright moonlight, even with uh, bright uh, light pollution from a city. So if you zoom in, you see these three stars, Al Nitak, Al Nilam, and Mintaka. All these names are Arabic names. Um, and just if we get closer, you will start to see the region. You see? Horse hat. So. Oh, it, yeah. So it is just by this star. So very little, uh, you know, distance from that star. Um, and, you know, I will explain some things. So uh, just remember about this star, Al Nitak. And there is another nebula. It's a beautiful nebula, actually. It's a flame nebula. But in this image, uh, uh, for, uh, for the, uh, you know, composition sake, uh, these, this star and for uh, also something else sake, this star and um, uh, this nebula are uh, excluded. And we're only seeing a uh, horse hat, this IC434, and also this NGC uh, 2023. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, you can, you can just download this program and you can play around. You can adjust where you are. You can go to future, you can go to past, for instance, you can go to the night that you were born and uh, see how the night was uh, looking, night sky was looking. Uh, so it's it's a lot of fun to use this program. And uh, we use this program for other purposes also, uh, to, uh, for instance, to see uh, what kind of uh, um, view we have. Uh, for instance, it, you see this uh, red uh, rectangular here. Uh, this is with my telescope. 
and with my camera, um, I am I will be seeing this much of sky when I point my telescope uh, to this part of the sky. So yeah, uh, uh, please download this, uh, you know, into your uh, computers and play with it. It's really fun, and you can you can also uh, follow. Uh, meteor showers, you can also follow uh, new comets and everything uh, in this one. Wow. Um, well, you, I think you had me at uh, looking at the night I was born and to see what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think that would, that would be really cool uh, to, to go back and, and look and see if there was any like uh, craziness or um, explosions or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I knew that you know I would I would get some people there. <laughs> oh, that's that's great. Uh, so I, I had a question for you, you know, when you were showing that. Um, and so my my question would be when you when you go to to search out what you're gonna use for an image, right? Or what you're planning ahead, uh, mm -hmm. do you do you sit there, you look at this program, you kind of play with the days, you you know, look into the future, see what's gonna be clear, whatever, um, and then uh, you know, maybe you spotted that there was a, this horse had nebula in, in a, a, you know, a, a really good light uh, that night. Mm -hmm. And then, then you went out and took, I mean, is that, is that part of your planning that you do? Yes, absolutely. Uh, well, uh, for instance, for uh, not this one, because we know that this, this object is a winter object, right? Uh, we cannot see um, Orion and, you know, the nebulosity around Orion during the summer. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, you know, during the planning, we look at, you know, where we are going to do the shooting, if the weather is clear, uh, not only clear, you know, if, uh, if there is high clouds, medium clouds, and how thick the clouds are. And of course, the elevation of the place that we will be at. And of course, uh, you know, at what time, uh, this object will rise from horizon and at what time it will go above 30 degrees because we tend not to shoot objects below 30 degrees uh, or let's say between zero and 30 degrees uh, from the horizon because that that is not a good uh, part of the sky uh, because the light of the object will move uh, even more distance in, uh, in our atmosphere, and it will uh, bring some artifacts. So yeah, uh, uh, this program uh, helps a lot uh, while shooting, before shooting, uh, for the planning also. That's awesome. Um, people in the chat are asking, what is that program uh, name again? Yeah, actually, I saw uh, Eva was asking. Uh, I <laughs> typed it. <laughs> it's, oh, he uh, did. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I, I typed it, and uh, it is um, it is a stellarium. So okay, I, now I see I... another funny question: What does Jabba eat for dinner? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Han Solo eats uh, some steak. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. So uh, you are multi-talented. You were, you're giving that big explanation. Type that. Uh, I didn't even see it. So you, you got me there. But yeah, continue on. Tell us more yeah. about the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so we have also a reflection nebula. And, you know, as the name suggests, something is reflected, right? Uh, you know, actually... Uh, in uh, you know, in some of the astrophotography pictures, you will see uh, the space are uh, pitch black most of the time. Um, you know, it's not always the case because um, space is full of materials, right? Uh, there are lots of molecular clouds. Um, there are um, um, there there is dust and gas and everything. So um, these dust and gas. Uh, reflects, um, um, you know, light from stars or uh, star or stars nearby, and if these uh, stars are not energetic enough to ionize the atoms in the molecules or in the atoms, like, like just we mentioned, 
you know, uh, we had some stars and they are young and energetic stars. Uh, they were emitting lots of uh, ultra, uh, ultraviolet light and they were ionizing hydrogen atoms or other atoms. And they were creating ionized hydrogen, oxygen, or whatever the element is. Uh, but in this case, the star or stars, if they're not energetic enough, uh, they cannot ionize the atoms or the molecules. But in this case, uh, these uh, atoms or uh, molecules reflect the light from the star or stars. So this is, uh, this is a reflection of the light. Uh, and we see here, uh, you see there is another one, NGC 2023. This is a very you know, large um, uh, catalog. It's called New Generic Catalog. So it is the uh, 2023rd uh, um, nebula in this catalog. So um, it's a huge catalog. And we see a blue light. So imagine, actually, we are looking at a kind of reflection nebula every day. Uh, what, what, that, what that might be? When you look at the sky in a you know, um, clear day, what you see is actually a reflection nebula. Our atmosphere reflects and uh, diffuse the light from sun because it's made of lots of different uh, atoms and gases, right? Uh, and it appears blue. So that's why uh, we, whenever we see a, a blue nebula, we can say that this is actually, this actually might be a reflection nebula, right? Uh, and the best uh, example for that is our uh, day uh, sky uh, during a clear day. So uh, the, it appears blue and a reflection nebula are uh, also blue. Uh, yeah, so the last nebula type in this image is a dark nebula. Uh, dark nebula are also called absorption nebula. Um, this, this um, actually, uh, they are interstellar clouds, uh, molecular clouds, uh, that they are so dense, uh, they don't let, uh, you know, the light behind them uh, coming from a star or emission or a reflection nebula. They block the light behind them. Uh, that's why they are called dark nebula. It is like, you know, uh, looking towards a car, you know, with the headlights on and just imagine I am, uh, you know, uh, standing right in front of uh, um, right in front of the car uh, on the headlights, uh, so you won't see me, right? Uh, I will be black, and as I'm not transparent, I will not. Uh, I will absorb the light, and I will obstruct the uh, obscure the light, uh, so you will only see my silhouette. It actually happens uh, deep here, so here uh, there is a prominent, uh, you know, some says you know. Um, seahorse, but uh, there is a uh, seahorse uh, or horse head uh, shape. Uh, so this is actually a um, dark uh, molecular cloud, uh, not letting uh, pass the light, this IC434 is light uh, to uh, front. So what we are seeing is uh, this horse head silhouette. And uh, this actually, this nebula, Horset Nebula, uh, or also known as uh, Barnard 33, uh, it, you know, this celestial equestrian is uh, named after this nebula. So this is a very famous one. Um, and uh, it basically looks like a horse hat. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you have any questions or if you have anything to add. Uh, oh, I, can... yeah, I, I always have something. I'd always, um, it's always interesting listening to you. You talk about uh, this this practice. It's 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 just crazy. Um, but uh, 
how many how much post production so you you i mean you're planning uh like you said it takes some science i mean there's there's all kinds of different combinations of what you're doing um together to make this process uh holistic um and how much post processing do you do on the photo after you you're you're happy with it i mean you you're, you're grabbing it and you're happy Oh, uh, well, you know, like it, it really depends on the data. You know, there, there are some data that I stopped doing it, you know, because when I cannot do the things right, uh, the, the way I want, I don't just post process it. But we will get there because uh, in the slides, uh, I will be mentioning about uh, how I am doing. But uh, I would say, you know, um, you know, and sometimes I... I leave the um, software open uh, for days and I come back and do stuff, uh, uh, you know, and I then leave and come back an hour later or day later and, you know, gone. So uh, it is a long process. And, you know, sometimes, um, you know, that's my uh, kind of principle. You know, when you cannot do something, just leave it for a while and come back later. And um, most of the time, uh, I get to do it, you know, uh, if I have some time gap between, uh, you know, um, if I pause a little. So, yeah, I, but I would say, uh, you know, some of the images uh, takes um, five hours, some take 10 hours, some, you know, I reprocess again because I don't like the way I processed. And every time you process, you will have a different result. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Because I even, <laughs> yeah, because even if you tweak a little different uh, while you're doing, uh, you know, the post processing, the image will be totally different. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I, I feel that completely. Um, I mean, just a slight color change. Uh, and, and it's really, you know, at the end of the day, it's really what you think it, you know, is going to be, I mean, you're the artist behind the, the, I mean, everything. I mean, it, this is astrophotography, but you are an artist, uh, you know, yeah. at, at picking up the, uh, you know, the, the composition of it, the, the, the colors, you know, the popping out the colors and, and, you know, just, and one little tweak is going to change it almost completely. Uh, yes. You know, you move it a little bit to the left, to the right, uh, if you change the colors <laughs> left and right, yeah. yeah, and and I I understand that. I mean, you could spend hours just going back and forth, you know, just to see what you like. And then sometimes you like multiple things, but you're trying to decide on one thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I I think that you um, you nailed it with this piece. Honestly, I, I'm looking at it on my screen uh, as well as the uh, the you know the stream here. But uh, yeah, you, you totally nailed it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you keep going, uh, but I, I will have some questions at the end here. <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, yeah, so we also talked about dark nebula. So like I said, you know, there are basically uh, six different types of uh, nebula, and uh, this image has uh, you know 50 percent. So three of them in one image: uh, emission nebula, reflection nebula, and the dark nebula. Uh, so th there is another uh, thing which is very prominent in this picture, and you know you can see uh, these stars have like you know are like crosses, right? So this star, this star, and the larger the star, uh, the larger the cross is. And you can also see I don't know if he is watching my dear uh, brother Arman. Uh, when he saw this piece, he was like, oh, Mustafa, what is this? There's, there's something coming out of here. Remember the star I showed you on Nitak? I told you not to forget about it, right? Uh, so these light rays are actually star spikes from Nitak. It's so bright. It's so bright. That's why it was left out uh, of the image. Because once you get that uh, image, um, uh, you know there, there is a um, uh, there is a concept called uh, high dynamic range, the dynamic range in photography, 
And I'm sure most of our uh, photographer friends will know about it. So it, it is the difference between the uh, brightest and uh, faintest part of the image, not only about astrophotography, but for all types of photography, is called a dynamic range. So when you add that star into this picture, you're enlarging the um, you're enlarging the dynamic range very very wide. There's something very very bright, and there's something very very faint. So it makes almost impossible uh, to shoot. Not impossible, but it's it makes really hard to shoot this image. But of course, there are um, you know. Uh, techniques to eliminate that, um, uh, that you can uh, shoot shorter uh, exposures for the star and a longer exposure for uh, the faint parts and combine them as a high dynamic range image and stuff like that. Uh, but um, for this image, uh, that very, very bright star left out of the frame on purpose. But uh, still, we have these uh, diffraction spikes from uh, from the star. But here, uh, also in the small stars, uh, relatively smaller stars, we have star spikes. What are these? Uh, so this uh, uh, image was shot with a um, uh, with a mirror telescope. So. Uh, you know, we have two types of telescopes in uh, basically, actually. Uh, one of them is uh, the telescope that uh, Galileo was uh, using. It is refractor, so it has lenses, but just like a photographer, a photographic camera lenses, and also uh, mirror telescopes or Newtonian telescopes because uh, it was uh, invented by uh, Isaac Newton. Uh, when you use a Newtonian or uh, mirrored telescope, uh, those type of telescopes have two mirrors. One main mirror, uh, which collects the light from uh, the celestial objects. And there is the secondary mirror, which reflects the uh, collected light uh, from secondary mirror to eyepiece or to your sensor. So that secondary mirror is carried by arms, which we call spiders. Uh, those spiders and geometry of that, those spiders actually uh, determines uh, the geometry of this uh, diffraction spikes. Not only uh, those um, uh, arms that are called spiders, also the shape of the uh, telescope mirror also uh, determines. Uh, for instance, nowadays, we are seeing lots of uh, images from James Webb Space Telescope, and it has a unique um, shape uh, in the uh, primary mirror, and it also has very unique uh, shape of uh, spiders. That's why we see a very unique uh, shape of uh, star spikes. So uh, with this, um, uh, finishing, um, you know, the elements in the object. Uh, but we're going to the uh, processing part. So uh, for processing part, I use a uh, software called PixInsight. Uh, it is a relatively ex uh, expensive one, but it is like Rolls-Royce of uh, astrophotography um, post-processing um, software. Even NASA is using uh, PixInsight. Uh, that's what we saw uh, during, uh, you know, reveal of first images from uh, James Webb Telescope. So they are using uh, is uh, they are using this um, uh, program. So this program, um, you know, uh, there is two parts in uh, post processing processing. Uh, it is a uh, first uh, part is called pre-processing and post-processing. So what is pre-processing? First of all, uh, during the pre-process, uh, we go through all the images that we shot because uh, these, uh, you know, astrophotography images are made of lots of, lots of, lots of images stacked all together. 
So uh, sometimes, you know, uh, hundreds, sometimes over hundreds, hundreds of images are shot uh, to create one image. And uh, for this image, um, uh, a monochrome CCD sensor camera was used with four different uh, filters, uh, L, L for luminance, R, G, B, red, green, blue, and for every channel, lots of images were shot and all those uh, images were calibrated and uh, stacked to have one master file for each filters. But before doing that, you have to go through all the subframes that are called subframes, every single image uh, before you start uh, calibrating, uh, you have to go and uh, select or, and deselect de uh, the bad frames uh, so that uh, your image uh, won't be uh, problematic. So uh, even though you know um, we lose data by deselecting, uh, we tend to do it because we look for uh, elongating elongated stars, which means uh, that um, the uh, the tracking uh, was uh, making a failure, or we are looking for, um, you know, planes or, um, you know, uh, satellites going flying uh, through our frame and stuff like that. And we deselect and uh, don't include into the final image. And then every single frame uh, for every single uh, filter is uh, calibrated with different calibration frames. And most of the time they are called uh, dark frames, uh, bias frames, and uh, flat frames. And uh, those frames are used uh, for eliminating different uh, unwanted artifacts or uh, artifacts or unwanted uh, things. For instance, um, Dark frames are uh, used for eliminating the thermal noise, uh, which is caused by uh, warming up of the sensor. Bias frames are uh, used uh, for eliminating the noise uh, uh, from reading out the data from the pixels. And flat frames are used for uh, the you know dots or what we called. Um, what we call um, dust bunnies uh, in the uh, optical pad and on the sensor uh, to clean those things up, we use uh, flat frames. Once we calibrate all the frames, uh, you know, depending on the filter, and then we align all the images all together using stars. Even though we are tracking the object, uh, you know, there might be a little uh, offset between images. So all these images before getting stacked, they have to be, uh, they have to be aligned to each other. And after, uh, uh, after the aligning, then we stack all the images and you can see actually here, it's a stacked uh, luminance image stacked blue channel, stacked green channel, and stacked red channel. And what you're seeing is here, here is the, uh, you know, peaks inside um, interface. Uh, these are the, um, uh, this is actually the um, workflow that I created and I mastered, uh, uh, you know, within the years. Uh, so when I am, um, you know, post-processing an LRGB image. This is called LRGB because it's made of three, four different um, uh, filters. Uh, when I'm creati creating an LRGB image, I follow this um, workflow and you can uh, change and uh, you can save this um, uh, workflow and use it after for uh, similar image. So uh, this, um, you know, makes uh, just, you can just imagine uh, something like 
actions in uh, Photoshop, but it's not quite the same, uh, but it's um, something like that. So you can create your workflow and you can save, you can change, uh, you can keep uh, the you know parameters and stuff like that. So um, let's move on. So you're here looking at um, single 600 seconds luminance frame. And here, your uh, this uh, this frame is uh, uh, calibrated with calibration frames, but only one frame, so it is only six hundred seconds. So you are looking at here eleven uh, six hundred seconds luminance stacked together. I don't know if it's clear from your screens, but I can see that this image is uh, much noisier than this one. And you can also see the detail uh, and um, you know signal is quite increased in this image. So this is what we are uh, looking for in astrophotography to increase uh, signal to noise ratio. That means uh, reducing noise and increasing the wanted light. Uh, yeah, and. Uh, Maybe we can also say something about luminance. Luminance is actually the brightness data uh, from the object. And most of the time, we tend to shoot luminance uh, more than the rest filters that we will talk about, RGB filters, because it is the most important uh, part. So when we have this stacked image, uh, we will, before combining it to an RGB image, uh, we will uh, post-process a little uh, all these four uh, channels differently. But for luminance channel, we will do lots of work, actually. Uh, we will first crop uh, equally all four images. And then uh, we will uh, we will equalize the uh, background, uh, because most of the time, uh, because of maybe a, you know moonlight or a light from coming from a car or your neighbor's light, uh, you may have some uh, gradients in the background. So you have to you have to fix it. But uh, for these type of images, especially uh, which has uh, nebulosity from corner to corner, it's even more trickier uh, to uh, fix that background uh, um, gradients. So th that's what we do first. And then for this luminance channel only, uh, we uh, do something called deconvolution, which is actually reverse engineering of uh, convolution which is the atmospheric effect. Uh, what is atmospheric effect? When this light uh, coming from this celestial object, it goes through all the atmosphere, right? Uh, so atmosphere has different layers with different speeds of wind and different temperatures. And this distorts the light coming from the stars and also the celestial objects. And that is not something we want. So we use this deconvolution uh, method, uh, which may take well over an hour itself. It's one uh, you know, uh, process within the whole post process. So it may take well over an hour because you have to create uh, what we called a star profile. Uh, we have to create different masks to uh, protect different parts of the image and so that uh, the deconvolution uh, only is uh, only affects the uh, nebulosity and the stars that we want. So uh, in astrophotography, you know, I always say, um, and this deconvolution is made in um, iterations. Uh, instead of making one big uh, smash, we always do it little by little. 
so that's what we are, that, that's what I was saying actually you know if you tweak uh one slider all the way you know the artifacts that you will get will uh be you know huge at the end you know at the end of the post process so that's why we use iterations and this iter uh, also the convolution also uses uh, iterations at this 20 to 50 sometimes 100 iterations uh, that needs uh, you know patience time and uh, also computing power uh, so after that um, uh, we do a um, you know press stretch uh, noise reduction with this uh, luminance layer. Uh, what is press stretch noise reduction? These images, uh, remember these four images, uh, they are stacked, but they are not stretched yet. So they are the, what we call linear images. Uh, the histograms are all the way to the left. You know, the Photoshop uh, users and uh, Lightroom users uh, will, of course, photographers will know what a um, uh, histogram is. Uh, the image uh, in these images, uh, the uh, histogram, histograms are all the way to the left, so they are called uh, linear images. Before uh, non-linearing these images, uh, we have to reduce the noise because while we are stretching the um, image, uh, the histogram, we will also be stretching the noise. To avoid that, we have to uh, have uh, a noise reduction. But again, uh, with this noise reduction, we have to be very subtle. And uh, we have to use uh, appropriate mask uh, because um, you know, uh, the noise profile of this image changes uh, from pixel to pixel. For instance, there is, no, there is less noise comparing to this place because there is signal here, which means light, and there is no uh, signal here. And noise lives where there is no signal. So uh, we have to block the high uh, signal uh, area, and we have to apply noise reduction uh, to the low uh, signal uh, dark parts of this image. And uh, once we are done with the noise reduction with a luminance, we are done with luminance. But, uh, you know, this may sound, you know, uh, easy to tell, but not uh, so easy to make. You know, it may take uh, like uh, over hour, two hours to uh, deal with uh, luminance. Like you were saying, DC, you know, because sometimes you, go back and forth uh, because you don't like something and you know you have to go back and do things uh, once again and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, here uh, our luminance channel is ready. And then uh, we have uh, red, uh, green and blue channels. Here you can see one single red image. It's a lot noisier than this one. And this is 11, red uh, image stacked and uh, for this uh, we don't do uh, we do the cropping equally cropped and we do the background uh, fixing uh, for um, uh, for the gradients in the background and also we do noise reduction if necessary but most of the time we don't do the noise reduction uh, at this level uh, for uh, red, green, and blue. And then we have green. Uh, you can see uh, we have one green, uh, 600 uh, seconds, and 11 green stacked. And then uh, we have uh, one uh, frame, uh, 600 uh, seconds blue, and stacked blue. And then, uh, you know, once we uh, do the... Uh, uh, processing uh, with all those uh, different uh, four channels. Uh, I just see it's cropping the full image or certain colors. Oh, no. Uh, you know, we, we tend to crop, uh, for instance, this is crop a very, 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 very little because, you know, 
maybe just a few pixels around the corners. Uh, maybe you can see very little uh, in the image here. We have some stacking artifacts. Uh, I just cropped in the uh, final image uh, that part. So uh, we don't crop the colors, we just uh, crop the image, uh, you know, depending on what kind of, uh, you know, um, composition we want to have. Uh, and when uh, when we are done with uh, four, uh, you know, channels, luminance, red, green, blue, we combine these uh, three channels in the first place, uh, red, green, and blue. And we have an image like this. So it's like, hmm, it looks nice, huh? Uh, we have the colors, uh, we have some stuff, but we are uh, lacking some contrast and, you know, we are lacking star colors. So yeah, we uh, process uh, this uh, a little bit more. Uh, we do the uh, color calibration. This is also a very scientific um, uh, process. Uh, this Pix Insight uses uh, some uh, data from uh, some uh, universities uh, to calibrate the colors, uh, looking, you know, um, having, uh, you know, um, calculating the, you know, um, calculating this image and uh, where is this image and um, having data from um, the database uh, corrects uh, the um, colors. And then uh, we do a pre-stretch uh, uh, noise reduction again. And we do a little bit of contrast and we do a little bit of uh, colors. But then uh, we add luminance on top of it. And you can tell the difference, right? Uh, um, you know, there's lots of lots of details and there's lots more color and uh, lots more light came to it. And after adding the luminance, we go and uh, again, uh, do some more steps, uh, maybe looking um, at some colors. Uh, we use lots of masks. For instance, we can use color masks um, to uh, block everything else, but uh, do things on blue, uh, block everything else, but do things on um, red, block everything else and do things on uh, stars or background and, uh, you know, uh, final tweaks. And then uh, this is actually the final image uh, after adding luminance, uh, uh, I tweaked all uh, the necessary stuff. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, not the whole post-processing, uh, of course, steps, but uh, it's more or less like this, you know. Um, from here, I will go to uh, the equipment and the observatory that I use uh, remotely. But if you have any questions or something to add, or I don't know if, if I should go on. No, keep going. And uh, I just want to say that the, that that was a fantastic explanation. And honestly, the the picture looks amazing after. Uh, yeah, I mean, look at that with the luminance added. Fantastic. But yeah, keep yeah. going. <laughs> yeah, thank you. OK. Uh, yeah, so um, having said that, um, you know, this is uh, we are looking at an observatory called LSOS. Source Observatory, on, in other ways. I don't know if Vic and uh, Handra are watching, so they like food. <laughs> so this is Source uh, Observatory, located in uh, Chile, Atacama uh, Desert. Um, and its elevation is uh, 1,500 meters uh, from the sea level. And as you may know, uh, Atacama Desert is the driest place on Earth. And this observatory has three, uh, 120 days uh, clear nights per year. So it's basically 45 uh, nights, you know, clouds. So just imagine <laughs> uh, 200, sorry, 320 nights per year. 
clear skies. Uh, yeah, so there are lots of uh, telescopes here uh, that uh, also uh, that can be used for scientific purposes also, uh, but also uh, for astrophotography purposes. Uh, here, you know, you can see some domes, and you can also see this sliding roof. That's what we call sliding roof. This building has lots of telescopes in it, and actually the telescope uh, used to shoot this uh, image is also in there, so in this uh, under this sliding roof. Uh, so yeah, uh, it is uh, high above uh, the sea, and it is chosen uh, on purpose. Uh, like I said, it's the driest place on Earth. Uh, we don't like humidity. Uh, in the air because it also affects the light coming from the celestial objects. So um, this uh, Atacama Desert is uh, chosen by uh, European um, Space uh, Agency and NASA for their largest telescopes and largest uh, telescopes on Earth uh, are in this region, actually. And they also have um, uh, they have. They also have access to southern skies, which is different than our northern skies. I mean, I don't know if anybody there uh, is from southern hemisphere. Uh, they see the sky different than what we see. Uh, so yeah, this is the beast uh, that uh, was used to capture that image. So uh, as you can see, it is a mirrored uh, telescope. It, you see. Uh, I don't know if you can see the uh, pointer. Uh, there is a large mirror uh, right here under this white hood. Uh, it is 24 inches or uh, 61 centimeters of um, uh, mirror. And you can see there is, uh, there is the secondary mirror. And this is what I was talking about, the spider uh, arms that uh, holding the secondary mirror and collected light reflects from the um, primary mirror, comes to secondary mirror, and then you see this black thing here. There's a hole inside, and it comes to this black thing here is the sensor, the camera, the CCD sensor. And this uh, piece is called, um, you know, uh, this is a fork mount, so it looks like a fork. That's why it's called fork mount. And this is, this tracks the uh, night sky so that we can have 600 seconds uh, exposures without having elongated stars. So it tracks the night sky as uh, Earth rotates uh, to have very accurate images. Yeah, so... Um, I access these, uh, this observatory and uh, this telescope and other telescopes via a service called Telescope Live, and it's their website you're seeing here. Um, um, so you can, you can actually uh, access the telescopes here in Chile. Uh, there are other telescopes uh, in Spain, and there are other telescopes uh, in Australia. Uh, you know, some of them are refractor telescopes, some of them are larger, some of them are smaller uh, for different purposes and with different uh, cameras and different filters, of course. Um, so uh, th this telescope live, um, I am their brand ambassador, uh, their tutor, uh, also, their judge uh, for um, their monthly um, uh, monthly competitions, uh, image post processing competitions, and also they are going to um, launch a very new competition uh, for astrophotography very soon. Uh, I will also be a judge there. So, um, me and uh, my friends, you can see the stellar experiences here. Uh, we actually mentioned about this in, a, uh, in one of our um, programs with DC. Uh, so that this is a company that I and three, two other friends of mine, 
uh, founded. Uh, we are aiming uh, professional um, experiences and courses on astrophotography. And we are creating tutorials. Uh, we are creating uh, wide field astrophotography data uh, for Telescope Live. And we are also creating tutorials uh, for the website. And uh, Telescope Live nowadays are uh, renewing their websites. And uh, we are planning uh, new uh, tutorials and um, uh, new classes and uh, new articles very soon. Um, so yeah, this is uh, one of the uh, tutorials that we created. Uh, it is uh, how to shoot Milky Way. So uh, we were explaining equipment planning and shooting settings. Um, there is a 27 minutes long um, a tutorial. And there is another tutorial, uh, how to process Milky Way photos. Uh, and there will be more very soon. So yeah. Uh, um, that that is it. <laughs> wow! Wow! That was that was fantastic. Um, it every time you come on, I, I learn more and more about this process. Uh, it is it is amazing that that you have a set up these tutorials for folks that are trying to get into the space. Uh, you know this this can be. Uh, uh, it looks it's a very intricate process. It's a lot of time. Uh, it's a lot of experience. And this can be, you know, hard for somebody to first step in without any guidance or or a mentor, right? Um, so having this uh, this stellar experience, <laughs> uh, you know, to uh, to to kind of go in and check out and uh, and learn from that that's fantastic and that's really cool. That's a really great service. Yeah, it is. And also, uh, yeah, maybe we forgot to say that, you know, uh, this image is uh, available on Super Rare. <laughs> oh, yes, we're, we're getting yeah. to that. Don't worry. Don't worry. So, yes, I am going to put it right up here. Um, and and this is uh, this is fantastic because um, Mustafa's work is is on, you know, it's on Maker's Place. He's on, uh, uh, you know, OpenSea. Uh, but uh, this new image is, and, and you've been learning all about it, which is fantastic. Everybody can walk away from here um, learning about the entire process. And that's really the experience. Um, it, it gives you a lot of, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? It gives you a lot of respect for the process, really. Um, the luminescence, the, uh, the different colors, the, the captures, um, you know, the grains that, that has to be taken out of these images. Um, the planning that has to go into it, and to see the finished result is just um, it's just stunning. And honestly, um, it is it is absolutely beautiful. This this perspective, um, the, you know, the colors, the light coming in from the side, uh, you know, the uh, the uh, the highlights or um, glows of of the actual horse head, um, and the and the you know stars around it. I mean, it's just everything kind of pops. It's just a fantastic image. And uh, we we definitely have a better respect for the whole process now that we watched uh, we watched your presentation. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, my pleasure, really. Yeah, and this is so this is on super rare. Um, and honestly, um, yeah, I, I definitely agree with Swati. It is it is stunning, and I and I love uh, uh, Swati's perspective on your work. I know she. She finds um, all kinds of different images and stuff in those. It's fantastic, uh, and uh, and really, really, it is kind of like this this shot of space that is almost like um, you know, just there's so many uh, Easter eggs, you know, in in the shots that you can see um, and use your imagination, and that's really what you're capturing. You're capturing something that's real, something so far away, uh, but uh, it, it has the imagination. Of uh, of earth, us Earthlings, <laughs> uh, it, it captures it. You know, it gives us that sense of wonder. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna post it in the in the comments here. Uh, definitely go check that out, folks, because um, you know this this is really literally out of this world, um, and it is a it is a fantastic NFT. And and I always love uh, having Mustafa on and then going through the stuff. It's it's just a fantastic experience all around. Yeah, thank you. And also, I, I, I'd love to add, actually, it's written in this description. 
but you know, this is a relatively close uh, object because like I said, you know, this is in uh, Orion constellation and um, you know, uh, our solar system is actually on the uh, Orion um, a spur of the uh, of our galaxy, so it's like Orion uh, arm, and it, even though it is uh, relatively close, it's thirteen hundred uh, light years away. So that means if you had a spaceship like mine, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, can speed with a uh, light speed, it would take thirteen hundred years to go there. Wow. That's a long time. I don't think I'm going to make it. Um, yeah, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was just typing in the chat. Uh, you probably saw it on my screen here, uh, the POE app. So, folks, yeah, I know that there, there, there will be riots. <laughs> there will be riots. Um, so, I am going to share the POE app code for those of you who want to grab it. I'm grabbing my phone right now. Because uh, I definitely want this Po app as well. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so open up your app and go to that secret word. I know all of you that uh, are used to watching our streams know how to get there. Uh, I tried to do Spaceman, uh, but that was actually the last one we did, and it wouldn't let me. So uh. this time it is Alien Man. One oh. word. <laughs> okay yes i minted mine <laughs> all right yes uh that's it's it, it said it's taking wow. a while but i i think i got it i think i got it so alien man folks uh that uh you know have the app open ready to get that po app it is alien man one word um wow this wow uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wow, it's it's fantastic. Oh, yes, look at that. Uh, we're getting folks that have are getting it. It is really good. Um, yeah, it is. It's going like hotcakes. So I'm glad. Um, man, this has been fantastic. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, it's trouble also did that. Alien man, uh, Andrew. <laughs> I yeah, I tried to do spaceman, but um yeah, it was late last night, so <laughs> yeah. Um, that but... looks fantastic. Yeah. So I have two uh two pops from myself now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm I'm loving these pro apps from you. I I uh I have a, a whole Mustafa collection here. Um, so it's yeah, it's you good. also have the one from uh dragons. Uh, right. That's right. I got the yeah. I got the dragons. I have um, when you came on camera culture, culture and, I, yeah. and I have uh, I have this one. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That, those are all mine, everybody. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for that. Yeah, That's absolutely fantastic. Well, um, this has been fantastic. Uh, any parting words for the viewers? Because we're, we're hearing a lot of wind Saturns. Um, that's been oh. popping up the chat. Yeah, um, you know, um, maybe you could give us a, a little brief uh, what's next and then we'll uh, we'll be on our way. But uh, yeah, tell, tell us what's next for Mustafa. Oh, uh, well, yeah, for sure. <laughs> what is next? You know, uh, the, you know, uh, very short term. Uh, goal is to sell this one and uh, go on with other pieces. Uh, you know, when um, uh, Handro's question, when Saturn, I don't know really, because I'm not a, you know, uh, planetary astrophotography guy, but I promise I will do it for him. I promise. So, um, yeah, for next, you know, of course, I will do uh, more stuff. Like I said, you know, I will create more tutorials uh, for. Uh, telescope live. Uh, I will go speak in you know some uh, events like I mentioned in the beginning, uh, and of course I will be here with you guys uh, in whale community, and you know I will leave the fullest um, this uh, three months of exhibiting artists and hoping to be uh, 
um, a resident artist. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's and, that's fantastic. Yeah, um, that uh, we we love having you in a, as an exhibiting artist, and honestly, um, your work always gives us a, a sense of wonder. Um, so you know, whoever whoever grabs this piece is going to be very lucky. Uh, because like you said, you know, if we, if we jumped in a, a ship, we would be there. Uh, well, we would never get there. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. And I also want to say something, um, you know, I will offer, uh, if you can, uh, share my Twitter page, uh, you know, for the one who uh, collects this, I will separate the send, uh, uh, you know, uh, banner. Oh, okay. Um, wow, that's okay, everybody. You heard that. If you collect this work, uh, you will get a banner. Um, yeah. And we don't we don't know what it is. It's a it's a secret banner. Um, but you'll get a banner. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, I, I don't want to, you know, uh, say it out loud, uh, but you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, make a donation. Uh, uh, for a friend also when I uh, saw this one. Um, so hopefully um, I, uh, to help a little kid, you know. Oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, Mustafa, you're such a great guy. <laughs> I, I, I love it every time you come on and uh, it, it is always a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. we... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, actually, you know, uh, last night, I, you know, I was watching just another uh, pumpkin um, uh, space last night. Uh, of course, not night uh, with my time. And he was talking about, um, he was talking about uh, Draconid and other mentor showers. I thought maybe we could, we could do some special spaces uh, when there are uh, special occasions in the night sky. Uh, in whale discord i don't know we can talk about it later maybe but you know that uh came up to my mind last night yeah yeah absolutely i i think everyone would love that if we uh if we had a little space and and got to watch uh you know everything all the process happen and everything i think that'd be yeah. really fun yeah like very short ones like you know maybe 15 second one uh, let's say if there is a coming meteor shower, we can just mention about it, you know, how to watch it, where to look at and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That would be great. And because, you know, most of the time there's so much light pollution around me, you know, I, I'd have to drive out to where Rune lives, yeah. you know, <laughs> to see anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's that's something good <laughs> so to meet up with Rune and have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, everybody, it's been fantastic. Thanks, everyone, for uh, staying with us. We had a fantastic crowd, uh, a lot of laughs in the Discord. And, uh, you know, thanks, everybody, for being a part of this. Um, you know where to find Mustafa. So he is on Twitter. Again, uh, Baker's Place, uh, Super Rare, the, the Celestial equestrian uh fantastic fantastic uh title is ready to go on super rare so go check that out um now you know how it was made and how it was captured so uh definitely look at that and honestly i'm gonna go back to this right here uh so this is all the socials and everything so you could uh replay this video and grab them from there uh, or you can check out the well twitter and you will see mustafa's work on there for this week uh, which has been fantastic. Been a lot of fun putting your stuff up. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, go go check them out. And uh, look at that if you're really interested. And um, seriously, if you're really interested in doing this type of photography, look up that Stellar Experiences because that uh, that sounds fantastic. And obviously, you've, you've heard Mustafa speak. He knows his stuff and he's a very, very good teacher. So go check it out. Thank you. And I hope Swati was not, uh, you know, so scared with some physics. <laughs> <laughs> she, she says it's a great interview, so she, yeah. she loves oh, it. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We really appreciate it again, and we will see you next time. Thank you very much, DC. Thank you, everybody, for watching. All right. Bye, everyone.